Hi there. So um, I wanted to do a quick video on oxidation states with a few more examples. So I've got the rules we discussed in class here, and it is the order of assigning that's perhaps the most important. Uh, so just to kind of go over those again, the oxidation state of any atom in an uncombined elemental state is zero including diatomics. And then oxidation states must add up to zero for a neutral molecule or a compound. And if it's an ion, they add up to the charge of the ion in magnitude and sign. Uh, when we have cations in group one, they're plus one. Cations in group two, like magnesium, plus two. Aluminum is plus three, and then some other common ones, silver plus one, zinc plus two, cadmium plus two. If the compound is in, uh, sorry, hydrogen is plus one in compounds, and fluorine is negative one. The rule five says oxygen is negative two, and rule six says um, that binary compounds, the nonmetal, has an oxidation state equivalent to the charge as if it gained that electrons. For example, nitrogen would be negative three um, if it was combined with a metal like calcium nitride. Okay, so I want to do some examples here. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do here is glucose, which is C6, H12, O6, now this is my first time I'm using this thing, so we'll see how it works here. And uh, if we follow our rules, the first one we assign is hydrogen, and that's going to be assigned uh, plus one, right? Eh. So let's make a note over here: hydrogen equals plus one. And uh, so uh, that's twelve hydrogen, so that would give us twelve for hydrogen. There's a delay in this thing. Anyway, uh, the second rule we'd, we would encounter on the list is oxygen being assigned negative 2. And we have to do that because carbon is not noted, so we'll have to figure that out from these two. So negative 2, we assign oxygen. From that, we get negative 12. And oxygen, let's make note, it's negative 2. So uh, all of these have to add up to the formula charge, which is zero. So right now, if I add these at 12 minus 12, we have zero. So that means the carbon must be zero to add up to zero. And if there are six carbons, then each must be zero. Zero times six. So carbon would be zero in this case. Zero oxidation state. <coughs> all right. So, let's do another example. Da, da, da. I am. Okay. This one we're going to do another carbon compound, carbon dioxide. Eh. Carbon dioxide. So, um, again, uh, we'll need to assign oxygen first here before carbon. So oxygen is going to be assigned negative 2 according to the rules. And there are two of them, so that is a total of negative 4. Everything here has to add up to 0. So <clears throat> since we have minus 4, then the carbon must be plus 4. So there's only one carbon so that would be a plus 4 oxidation state. So 4 times 2 times negative 2 would add up to 0. So carbon here would be, come on, slow, plus 4. As it turns out, this is the highest oxidation state of carbon. Um, and perhaps the most stable oxidation state. Indeed, we can see that carbon dioxide is a product of combustion, which is a very spontaneous process. Things tend to burn and produce carbon dioxide. Okay, so 
We'll do another example. Uh, this is going to highlight, well, all right. Sometimes you get one you don't expect. There's a oxide of iron which has the formula of Fe3O4, uh, which we find in nature. And so we're going to do what we did before. We're going to, uh, uh, oxygen's got to come first here. So negative 2, make a note here. Oxygen is negative 2. Uh oh. Boom. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So that has to add up to, once again, we have a neutral formula 0. So uh, then the total iron must be plus 8, right? Because 8 minus 8 would make 0. Now we get something very odd. There are 3 irons for a total of 8. So how do I get iron? Well, it must be. 8 divided by 3, right? So 8 thirds would be the oxidation state. Now it looks odd, but that is the reality. What it is actually, it's an average oxidation state if we, if we, uh, now where did my thing go? Okay, it's over here. Let's just make a note. Here iron is plus 8 thirds. Now if we write the Write it this way, it'd be uh, 2 and 2 thirds. And we see that, if we may recall, that <coughs> iron is uh, sometimes plus 2 iron 2 and sometimes plus 3 iron 3. In this uh, mixed iron oxide compound, uh, you get uh, some iron 2 and some iron 3 atoms. And uh, so overall, the average comes out to be two and two thirds for the oxidation state. So sometimes you get what you don't expect. All right, we'll do one more. And this one is going to uh, remind us basically about the order of the rules that we apply. So we have this compound with oxygen. And here we would be making a mistake if we assigned oxygen negative 2 first. Because, let's go look at our rules again. Uh, here is the rule for oxygen, number 5. It's actually pretty far down. It's assigned after hydrogen and fluorine. And if we go up we, to number 3, we, we have the rule that says gr group 1 alkali metals are plus 1 in compounds. And so if we go back, we see actually we have sodium, an alkali metal. So we actually have to assign this plus 1 first. So times 2 would give us 2 for sodium. The compound is 0, as usual. So oxygen must add up to negative 2. 2 minus 2, 0. And uh, there's two of them, so each one must be negative 1 oxidation state. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So oxygen here is negative 1, which happens to be uh, also the oxidation state of peroxide. If I can write these correctly here. If you may have noticed, the formula looks a little weird at the beginning. And in nomenclature, we would have said this was uh, sodium peroxide. So in, in fact, uh, if you would have noticed that peroxide, you might have been able to assign oxygen a negative one. So anyway, the main thing is to apply these rules here in the proper order in order to have success in assigning oxidation states. Hope this helped. Bye-bye.